Hi, this is Ali Arango of LittleGuyCGI.com, and today I would like to show you how to make a simple spaceship inside of Blender 2.71, so let's get started. Okay, if this is your first time in Blender, I recommend you go to File, User Preferences, go to Input, and then choose Select with left click. Uh, Blender's default select is with right click, and this may confuse you if you're coming from Adobe or other 3D programs. Okay, this spaceship that I'm going to show you is very simple, but I'm actually kind of excited to uh, show you a technique that I learned that I think is uh, pretty cool for adding very quick detail to something like a, a spaceship, like the, the outside hull part of the ship. So the first thing we're going to do is with this cube selected, as it usually is when you come into Blender, you're going to hit X to bring up your uh, delete menu and delete the cube. You're now going to hit Shift A. Uh, to bring up your add menu and then you're going to go to cylinder okay when a cylinder first comes in you're going to look to your left and you'll see a thing that is at your there's a add cylinder uh, menu and you're going to change these vertices from 32 to 12 generally when you're modeling in blender you operate in two different modes there's object mode which we're in now and which you start in when you come into to uh, blender and there's also edit mode which you can click in here and if I go back into object mode you can also hit tab mode to get into edit mode and then press tab mode again to get back into object mode the different ways did you maneuver around in blender if I roll my mouse wheel I'll zoom in I roll my mouse wheel the other way I'll zoom out if I use the uh, number keys on the keyboard if I press one it'll, I'll go into front perspective view three into right perspective seven into top perspective I'm going to hit three now to go back into right perspective and perspective is kind of like a 3d ish view that you're looking at if I hit five uh, the view will go into right orthographic view mode and uh, orthographic basically is where you look at an object in blender uh, as if you were looking at a blueprint Uh, not too long ago these tabs were added here in blender and uh, I think that the tab thing is cool and I think it's you know cool for new people to get a better handle on uh, blender but one of the things that I didn't notice with these tabs is if you click here this these navigation tabs actually you can get to all of your different views right from here and I truly think this is spectacular I mean this is uh just very easy to change your views around uh, it's actually been here for a while and I didn't notice it. So if you happen to be on a laptop and you don't have number keypads or number keys, you can actually just go to this navigation and just get around here as far as your viewport port. So very cool. Okay. So what we're going to do now is, uh, I'm actually going to hold my middle mouse button and turn to the side. I'm going to hit tab. You can see we're in object mode. I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode. I'm now going to hit R to rotate on the x-axis see that red line right there that red line is showing us how blender is going to rotate this object so I'm going to hit nine zero and it you know totally turned blender turned it on a 90 degree uh, angle so it's you know nicely laid out for us to work on this model okay what we're going to do now is we're actually going to uh, in blender you select things by vertices, edges, and faces, of which you can see right here. We're going to click here to go to face select. You're going to click here, and you're just going to take the manipulator. That's what this uh, colored object is, and you're just going to push this forward just to stretch out this object a little bit more. You're now going to hit Control R. That purple line shows you a preview of a, a loop cut, and that's what Control R does. It gives you loop cuts. And if you roll your mouse wheel you can get multiple loop cuts. So I just rolled it one time to get two loop cuts. I'm going to left click one time. And now because I only left clicked one time, I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis. See that green line showing you a preview of how these uh, loop cuts are going to go. I'm just going to pull back a little bit just to spread them out some. And I'm going to left click to lock in. With those loop cuts still selected, I'm going to hit S to scale. And I'm just going to scale them up a little bit like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our face select. We're going to select this face right here. I'm going to push this forward just slightly. 
Now I'm going to hit S to scale to scale this down some, like that. I'm actually going to go to Edge Select, hold Alt, and select this edge loop. And when you hold Alt while selecting an edge loop, you select the entire edge loop. I'm going to hit S to scale just to scale this down just a little bit more. I'm now going to hit Control R to put one more loop cut in. And because I didn't click anything, I can move this loop cut back and forth. So I'm going to move this loop cut just slightly forward a little bit. Then I'm going to left click to lock that uh, loop cut in. Now I'm going to go to Face Select and I am going to hit C for Paint Select. And uh, that circle you see is an area of influence that we can paint in. So if I roll my mouse wheel back, it grows. If I roll the mouse wheel the other way, it shrinks. So you're just going to follow along with me and paint a similar area like this. I, now I right clicked to get out of Paint Select so I could hold the middle mouse button to turn to the side. Then I right click again to get out of it. Okay, I see I need more to make this even, so more faces to make it even. So I'm going to hold Shift now and select here. When you hold Shift, you can select multiple uh, faces. Okay, so now with these faces selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control B, and I'm just going to pull about to you see like there. And now with that selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift D, left click to lock in, and I just duplicate those faces. I'm just going to lift them straight up. And now with those faces lifted straight up, what I'm going to do now is hit E to extrude. And when I hit E to extrude, I just created new geometry. I'm going to left click to lock in. So I hit E to extrude. I didn't push pull or, you know, uh, press anything other than E to extrude because I wanted to create new geometry right on top of this geometry. Why did I want to do that? I wanted to do that so I could do this. Right now this uh, kind of cage that we're making here looks totally flat because we created new geometry that is totally on top of the other geometry even though it doesn't look like anything happened. There's faces sitting right on top of the other faces. Now we can hit Alt S and then pull and you see what's going on. So now we have thickness to that uh, that cage there. Then we just left click to lock it in. Then when you have um, something selected in Blender, like you have a, a face, a vertice here, an edge selected of a, a, I guess you could say a separate piece of a, a, a part of a mesh you're dealing with, I'm going to hit Control L. When you have a, a face, vertice or edge selected, you can hit Control L and you'll be able to grab that in, entire uh, part of that mesh, which is very, very useful. So I'm actually going to take this and push this back down. And now you can see we have our, our thickness there, which is pretty cool. Okay, what we're going to do now is our basic design is, is here is the, the cockpit so the, the uh, pilot will be able to look out here and we want the pilot to actually see what's going on in front of the ship. This is going to be a smaller craft, so this also is going to be a, 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 a viewport where the pilot's going to be able to see out of here. So what we're going to do with our face select on is select right here. We're going to hit E to extrude, left click to lock in. We're going to hit S to scale down to about like that. We're then going to hit E to extrude. Uh, again, left click to lock in. Then we're going to take our manipulator to push in slightly just for a little bit of uh, thickness. We're now going to hit X to delete that face. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to go to uh, the our edge select. We're going to hold Alt and we're just going to select that edge right there. This is, so the edge is being selected all the way around in a circle because we held Alt. Okay, and with that, uh, that circle or edge loop selected, now what we're going to do is we're going to press Control F. This brings up our faces menu, which gives us different options that we have to, you know, deal with working with faces. So what we want is grid fill. So we choose the grid fill option, and then we can uh, manipulate some of how the grill face, gr the grid fill is placed right here. So we click offset. It'll turn the grid a little bit, and uh, I think I'm gonna. 
think I'll leave it like that. Okay, so now that we have that, I'm going to hit Control Z because I still want that selected. So now that we have these these faces set up, and what Grid Fill did is normally we would hit, we would we might press F and it would fill just uh, one plane, one circular plane with no uh, divisions in it. But Grid Fill tries to match up your the the area that you're filling to match up the geometry around it, which is uh, very cool. So with this geometry selected, we're going to do like we did before, we're going to uh, choose control. We're going to press control B and then pull. This is going to be yet another grid just to give some infrastructure. Uh, I guess the best way to put it uh, to protect this, this glass that the pilot will be looking out of. So let's deal connected so I don't want it I want it to be recessed like this so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit shift D uh, left click the lock on like before and I'm going to bring this grid out very similar like we did before I'm going to hit E to extrude left click the lock in and now I'm going to hit Alt S to uh, I don't like how that looks. I'm going to hit Control-Z. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. Much better. And now we have some thickness there. And now that we have that, I actually don't want this to be uh, this grid feel for this because we have the grid feel here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hit a C for paint select. I'm going to select face here. Face select here, and I'm going to paint this area here. Now I'm just going to hold shift and select that face right there. So it looks like we have the whole area selected. I'm going to hit X to bring up the delete menu, and I'm going to delete the faces. Now I'm going to go to edge select, and what I told you I used the uh, I told you I used the grid fill for before. I'm going to use that now. Actually, I don't. I'm going to get rid of this ring here, so I'm going to. Go to face select here. I'm going to hold alt. I'm going to select right here. I'm going to hold shift to see if it'll let me uh, grab this unwanted uh, face loop. I'm going to hit control Z there. I'm just selecting this just to get rid of it. I'm just going to hold shift without holding alt just to select these unwanted faces here. Yeah, I did like a loop-to-loop a -loop right there when I pulled too far. Okay, and I think they're all selected. So I'm going to hit X to bring up my delete menu and choose faces to delete those faces. Good. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edge Select. I'm going to hold Alt. I'm going to select the edge here, and I'm going to hit F to put in that um, this plane right here. And the reason why I want that is because... Later on in this tutorial, we're going to turn this to a glass material, and we're also going to turn like this to a, a glass material. So I want this, you know, I want it to look like there's a reason for this grading to be there. This grading is going to be help. It's going to be there to support this glass, while at the same time the glass is going to allow the pilot to see out as it's as he's he or she is fi is piloting this uh, ship. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, go to face select. I'm going to select any part of this cage right here, I'm going to hit Control L. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel to zoom out. I'm going to lift this cage straight up. I'm going to roll my mouse wheel back a little bit more just to give some space here. Now I'm going to roll the mouse wheel in. And actually what I want here is I want to do paint select. And I want to grab all of these faces right here. I can roll the mouse wheel to control the area that I'm grabbing. I'll just, 
when you do paint select, if you hold your middle mouse button, you'll get you will unselect, which is extremely useful. So if you use paint select, if you're following along and you select the wrong thing, just hold uh, hold down the middle mouse button and you will deselect. And I'm going to right click to get out of there. You can see there's a piece I didn't grab here, so I'll hold shift. So I don't lose the other selection, I'll hold shift here and shift here. Oh, and holding shift I'll select here. Okay, it looks like I have all of that now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, the Y key. What Y will do is, even though we're in edit mode, uh, it will separate this part of the mesh from this part of the mesh. So I'm going to hit Y. And now when I pull up, I can just pull this totally off. And there's some advantages to this, because eventually we're going to turn this to a, a glass later on. Uh, for now, I'm actually going to hide this. So I can hide, the way I can hide things is with this select, I can hit H. So it's still in Blender, it's just hidden. So now I'm going to select a part of the mesh here. I'm going to hit Control L to just select this mesh right here. Okay, now what we're going to do is take our manipulator and we're just going to push this down. This one of the advantages of using the manipulator, you can move things around. I know that if I push right back down, this will be right in position. So now what I'm going to do is select a part of the uh, bottom part of the ship here. I'm going to hit Control L to grab that. And I don't want this, this shouldn't be, there shouldn't be like wind resistance or I don't know what there is in, in, in space, but it shouldn't look like there's resistance coming to this cockpit, I don't think. So what I'm going to do is hit Alt S. And what that does is it'll actually make this bottom part of the ship a little bit fatter. And the advantage for us is, is it will allow it, allow the allow this cage to look like it's kind of recessed in. So actually what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab here, I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna grab here, and I'm gonna hit S to scale on the x-axis to pull this out to the side a little bit. I'm gonna hold shift and select here. Now normally we'd use a mirror modifier, I just wanna do something different. Mirror modifier would do the work for on both sides, but if you don't put a mirror modifier on, you can also do this and this will give you somewhat the same. So here, that's too much. Grabbing this full face, so I can actually grab right here. Hold shift and grab, select here. And now I can hit S to scale on the X axis for there. And you still can see I can get, I'm getting basically the, generally the result that I want. I'll select these edges. Oops, I'm good. I don't want to grab the cockpit. I want to grab the what's underneath there. Select like that side. And hey, what the heck? I'll select. I'll hit Control L. I'll select this entire thing, and I'll actually push this down some. And I'll select these edges here. Holding my middle mouse button to turn, I'll pull this up slightly. I'll select one edge there, hit Control L, and I'll pull, pull this up to see how it's looking. And I think what I'm going to do with this cage is I'm actually going to hit Control, I'm actually going to hit Alt S to shrink the cage down some. Too much. Eh. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Y axis to pull it in some. There we go. Push it down a little. And now what we can do here, see how this paper thin stuff is going on here? Let's grab this edge here. Grab this other edge here, hit S to scale on the X axis to, whoops, other direction. Without some, same thing with this edge. Hold shift. Select the edge on the other side. S to scale on the x-axis. 
pull that out. So I mean, what we can do with this is we can hit Control, we can hold Alt, select this edge, this edge, and it selected all the way around there, which is great. Now we'll hit E to create new geometry. And now we'll just hit S to scale to scale that new geometry down, which will give us some thickness and help to match up with this uh, this cage. little thing right let me stop uh, going after these small ports blender is, is fun and it can get to you little small things you see you can keep but you gotta sometimes remind yourself you're in a tutorial of course when you were that's for when you were actually making the tutorial which I am me stop rambling. I'm going to take this, I'm going to push this back here. So we have our basic uh, cockpit there. Okay, now we're going to add a kind of wing to, to the ship. Uh, one of the things that I didn't do when I first started modeling in Blender that I do a lot now is uh, using the snap menu which is extremely useful so by selecting I want to put a wing you know tight part of the ship right here so it, it's very useful to select the face here and I'm going to hit shift s which brings up our snap to menu then I'm going to choose cursor to selected so the cursor comes right to here right where I pretty much want to bring the uh, the uh, wing object in or, or make it you know right here uh, and because new objects come in where the 3D cursor is at, it's just very useful to do this. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A. I'm going to bring in a cube. I'm going to pull the cube out to the side. I'm going to hit S to scale on the Z axis, like that. I'm going to grab with the face uh, with face select on. I'm going to select the front the front part of here. I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis. I'm now going to uh, grab the back face here. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. Then I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis. Okay, this front part of this wing, I'm going to grab here. And I'm calling it a wing. It's not quite that. I'm going to uh, go to, to edge select. I'm going to widen this out some. And I'm going to hit Control L to grab this whole wing piece thing and when it S the scale. Then I'm going to hit uh, S the scale on the Z axis to make it thinner. I'll push it forward some. Yeah, put it about like that. Okay, now the you can see from the the cockpit, you know, the person's going to sit right here. I want to make it look like there's some kind of uh, engine going on in here. So I'm going to go to face select. I'm going to select here. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. I'm now going to hit uh, E to extrude on the Y axis again. I'm going to hit S to scale in some. I'm going to hit E to extrude, left click. I didn't push or pull anything. It gets you a, put you in a better position so you can see. I'm going to hit S to scale here. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. I'm going to push in here. I'm going to hit uh, S to scale in a little bit. I'm going to hit E to extrude, left click to lock in. Hit S to scale in. Now I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis. Then I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis again. Hit S to scale up some. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis again. E to extrude on the Y axis again. Hit S to scale. 
Hit E to extrude, no axis, no push pull. Left click to lock in, hit S to scale in. And then I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis to push in. I'm going to hit S to scale, hit E to extrude, left click to lock in, hit S to scale in. And E to extrude on the Y axis. E to extrude, no axis. Hit S to scale in again. E to extrude on the Y axis. It's kind of fun doing that stuff. And I actually want this diameter bigger here. So I'm just going to, with face select on, I'm going to hold Alt. Select these edges right here. And I'm just going to hit S to scale. To make it a little bit bigger. Okay, and now I think I'm actually gonna see this ring. We still have it selected. I'm gonna hit uh, I'm gonna hit Shift D to grab that ring. One of the things when you're dealing with mechanical things to keep in mind, uh, you can get a lot of detail out of things by by uh, copying things and moving them around. So I just duplicated this, right? So I'm trying to think exactly what do I want to do with this? Actually for now with this what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Alt S. Alt S is a special kind of alt. It kind of makes things fatter or skinnier. And I'm actually going to hit R to rotate on the Z axis, 9, 0. And this is going to be our connector for our wing. I want a little bit more detail in here, so I'm going to hit uh, Control R. Actually, I'm going to right click, so I'm going to, I want it to be even, so I'm going to hit, uh, I just hit Control Z to go back. I'm going to hit Control R and then roll my mouse wheel once, left click to lock in, and then hit S to scale on the x-axis to move these out some. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with the face face select on, I'm going to hold alt, select here, hold shift while holding alt and select here. And then I'm going to hit S to scale. Oh, look at that. It's not giving me what I want. It's making the whole thing bigger. That's interesting. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select here, I'm going to hold alt, I'm going to hit E to extrude, left click to lock in. Then I'm going to hit Alt S. Just to give a little different shape. I'm going to do the same thing here. I held Alt to select that. I'm going to hit E to extrude. Left click to lock in. And then Alt S. I actually want this to be a little bit different. Now I'm going to hit Control L to grab the entire thing. Pick how I want this to go in. Connect. I'm going to hit S to scale it down some. I'll hit S to scale on the X axis to make it actually look like it's connecting. And as far as this part, I'm actually going to click this edge, lift this up slightly. Pull this down slightly. Okay, and believe it or not, we're actually just about done. So you might sit there and say, my gosh, that's simple looking. That's so simple looking. Well, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys that I thought was pretty cool is this. And uh, basically how this goes is I'm going to select these faces here, right? I'm going to hit Shift D to duplicate these faces. I'm going to pull these up. I'm going to rotate the uh, view so these lights and cameras don't get in the way too much. I'm going to hit a W or light and camera. I'm going to hit W, choose a subdivide, subdivide four times, I guess. 
and this is a basic, you know, subdivision. You know, we, we can obviously see it's, you know, basic 3D, how the subdivision lines up. Now, what I want is it to be kind of like a, a pattern, right? So, uh, what you can do to get, like, not just... Because basically what, what I'm doing here is I'm making kind of like a, a, a whole plating for a ship. What you want to do is you're going to select one face here, right? You're going to hit O to turn on your proportional edit tool. This is the proportional edit tool right here, that blue right there. <clears throat> when I hit G, you can see the area of influence of the proportional edit. See that circle? So now if I hit Z, Z t is basically shows you where you can pull or which axis you're pulling this on. So I'm pulling this, you know, either straight up and straight or straight down. That blue purplish line shows you a preview of, of what's going on happen here. So I'm going to push up. Now, as I push up, I can roll my mouse wheel, right? And what you want to do is you want to get this thing so that all of your, whoops, started affecting that down there, which, which we don't want. So we're actually, we can go to Alt-O. See how now this blue has a, a it's kind of like, looks it has a, it's like a ring more than just a, a circle now. And that's, when you do that, the area of influence will only affect the object that you're currently working with. Okay, so now this is called connected proportional edit. It's connected proportional uh, editing. So now even when I roll the mouse wheel to make the area of influence bigger, it shouldn't affect the ship down there. So now let's try this again. We're going to hit Z so we can see our area of influence. We're going to hit Z and then we're going to pull up. And now you can see that it's not affecting the, uh, the ship down there. And the goal, the reason why we're even doing this is we want these faces to be going in different directions. And the reason why we want that is we're going to hit control L. Now we're going to hit X and we're going to select limited dissolve. Now, when we select limited dissolve, this menu pops up over here for doing with limited dissolve. And you see it dissolved some of the, uh, the faces, the limited dissolve menu did. Now we can take this and move this back and forth. You see what's going on there? How it's, it's kind of like giving us a, a grid, but it's almost like different patterns. Like here it's four here, you know. I found this out the other day and I was like, wow, that is pretty cool for like uh, doing like a, a whole plating kind of thing. Okay, so now we have, you know, this kind of like pattern, like and you can play with it. You know, you can, you know, have it like that or like that. Just pretty cool for making fairly quick haul plating. Okay, so now that we have that set up. Okay, now that you have that set up, what you want to do is turn off this proportional edit. So you can either click here and click disable, or you can hit the O key, which is the key in between I and P. And uh, you're going to actually have to hit it twice. You click it once when you're working with connected proportional edit. It'll take you back to regular proportional edit. So click it again, and it'll turn off. Now, with all these faces selected, you want to hit S to scale on the... Z axis and then zero and what that will do is flatten your uh, flatten your faces back out okay and now that they're flattened out now what you want to do is you want to press alt E and this brings up your extrude menu and you want to select individual faces so click this okay now that you click that you're going to right click to get out of that and now what you're going to do with that is you're going to go here to where you have your uh, pivot point and your normal pivot point is medium point. You want to change this to individual origin. So you're going to click that. Now with that selected, you're going to select S to scale. And basically what you're doing here, just like the whole plating, basically what happened now is you were able to select all of these pretty much at the same time. You were able to put spaces in between each of the individual faces. So now with that done, I'm going to zoom in here. Now you can e hit E to extrude on the Z axis. Whoops, I had it and I lost it. And just take up very slightly to give some uh, some thickness. Not too much, not too little. About like that. To your whole plating. Okay, and now with these faces still selected, I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna press uh, Control L to select. Uh, all of the geometry here and because we use this manipulator to take this geometry straight up we can just use the manipulator to take it straight down okay and now you can see we, it doesn't look so simple it's a fairly quick way to add detail 
if you're working with something like a spaceship, a mech, it could be even like some kind of a sci-fi fortress or something. This is pretty effective, you know, for, for uh, quickly getting some type of uh, plating. So what we're going to do now with those faces selected, we're going to hold shift. And with the face select still here, we're going to select here and we're going to select here. We're going to hit control L to grab uh, all of these three different pieces of geometry here. We're now going to hit shift C to reset our 3D cursor right uh, exactly to the, the center of this blender scene. We're now going to hit one to go into front ortho view and you can see the 3D cursor is exactly center and that's what we want for this next uh, this next uh, technique that we're about to use. Okay, what we're going to do now is we have the 3D cursor here. We have all of these, uh, all of this geometry selected here. We're going to click here. We're going to turn this to this pivot point to the 3D cursor. So now everything in Blender will, all the, the 3D objects will pivot off of here. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit, uh, and, and here is the 3D cursor. That's what I mean when I say here. I'm going to hit Shift D. So we duplicated all this, this geometry. I'm going to right click to bring it right back to where it, it, uh, it was. Now I'm going to hit S to scale on the x-axis, negative 1, then left-click to lock in. And what this does is this effectively duplicates what you have on this side pretty much exactly to the other side. Uh, you can see like there's kind of like a dark darkness here. Basically, when you work in Blender, you, you have something called normals. Normals are the directions that your faces face. If those normals get disrupted, you can have problems. So generally, if you hit Control N, a lot of times it'll fix it. And you can see that this darkness went away here, but yet for the top hole plating, there's still kind of like a darkness here. If you can see that, so I'm gonna left click here, hit Control L, so I grab just the hole plating here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit W to bring up my specials menu. If Control N, which means recalculate normals doesn't work, uh, a lot of times you'll have to go to your specials menu and click flip normals. And now if you look here, you can see that darkness is gone. And now if I hit A, this side looks like this side. So the normals and the geometry looks like it's right. Okay, our, our ship is almost done. So what I'm going to do now is with face select on, I'm going to select right here. I'm going to uh, select shift S. And I'm going to uh, choose cursor to select it to put the 3D cursor right here. Okay, now we're going to turn this uh, pivot point back to medium point. Now we're going to go to, uh, I'm actually going to hit tab to go into object mode. I'm going to select file, append. And I am looking for a seat. Um, wait a second. There we go. This is how you append things. Uh, I'm going to append a, a, a seat in, which basically means bring another object in, most likely the object that you made previously, which this is. I'm going to click, click link append. I brought this plane in, which I didn't want. I'm going to hit X to delete that. I'm going to select this joystick right here. Hit Tab. Go into Edit Mode, hit A. And basically what I did was the I brought a seat for a cockpit in here. It's too big. So I'm going to pull this out to look at it. I'm going to hit S to scale. I'll put a link up to where I show how to make this uh, cockpit at. Actually, let me, I'm going to hit tab. This right here, you guys might have forgot about it. We actually hid this. And because I came out of that view, it's, when I came out of this actual view, that's why you were able to see it. So, cockpit fitting in there nicely. So, what I'm going to do is hit uh, Alt H to bring this back in. I'm going to just, oops, let me hit Control Z. These like this. I'm just going to lift this straight up. Okay, now that I can see the cockpit, I'm going to hit 
tab because I, this is a separate object, so I can't, I can't, uh, I cannot select this while I am inside of another object. So I'm going to select on the seat. So we're in object mode, which is the reason why I can select it at all. So now that I have it selected, I can hit tab and go into edit mode. And now that I'm in edit mode, I can adjust it. So I'm going to hit S to scale. Back some. Pilot has some leg room there. And I think while I'm in here, what I'll do is I'm going to grab this face right here, zoom in so you guys can see this, hit shift D, pull this face out. Those purple lines are sharp lines. If you're curious, like, like what the heck is that? So we'll put a screen up for him here. And by having the screen over him here, he'll still, he or she, uh, will still be able to see what's going on down there below the ship. So we'll hit E to extrude on the Y axis like this. And hit Control L to grab the whole thing and push it back. Sometimes it helps when you're setting something up is to push it, actually push it through the mesh. I'm going to shrink it down some. I'm going to, and see how it's got, I can't tell if it's got that weird normal, strange normal look. And I'm going to hit control L to grab the whole thing. I'm going to hit control N to, yep, to uh, recalculate normals. I'm going to select this face right here. I'm going to hit E to extrude, left click to lock in, S to scale. And you most likely won't even see the screen, but I figure what the heck. I'm going to hit E to extrude on the Y axis just to push it in. So there's a little bit of uh, you know, recessness going on. So now it just appears like he has a screen to, he or she has a, a screen to uh, look through. Now this right here is going to be, this is a separate object. Right now we're currently in the object mode of the seat. So I'm going to hit tab to go back into object mode. So now this whole spaceship and this glass part, even though it looks separate, are all part of the same object. So basically there's two objects going on in here. There's the ship and then there's the seat. And uh, like I said, I think I said it. I can't remember if I said it or not. I'll put a link up so that you can uh, go to, uh, I'll put it so it goes right to the part of the tutorial uh, where it shows you how to make this uh, seat. Anyway, I'm going to click right here. I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to push this down into place. We want this like that, right? Yeah, underneath of this uh, cage portion here. You know what? I'll actually take that seat and I will put a link to where you can uh, get a copy of it uh, also in the description. Okay, now we're just going to go into cycles and add some materials uh, to this ship. So right now we're in the Blender Renderer. You're going to click right here, click Cycles Render. So now we're in the Blender, Blender Cycles Renderer. We want to bring two planes in here. Wherever the 3D cursor is at is where the planes will come in at. So we're in edit mode and, you know, we're in the edit mode of the ship right now. So we're going to click here and... Uh, Go to object mode. Okay, in object mode, we're going to right click. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back some, right click a little bit higher. We're going to hit shift A to bring a plane in. So there's a plane. I'm going to hit S to scale. Left click to lock in, S to scale again. I'll move this forward a little bit. And I'm going to hit shift A to bring another plane in. I'm going to take my manipulator and put it beneath the ship. I roll, hold the middle mouse button to turn the view slightly. I just hit S to scale. Now left click to lock in. S to scale again. This grid is... I'm going to turn this grid off. I just hit N and then I went to display, select the grid to turn that off. Okay, so now 
what's cool about cycles is cycles gives you very realistic light cycles generally makes things just look uh cycles makes objects and meshes inside of blender just generally look beautiful okay and while we're in here i'm just going to click and change this to a gpu i can do this because i have a particular nvidia card uh in here i'm just going to click here i'm going to Take my mouse, hold it over this menu. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button and pull it to the side. I'm going to select the materials here. I'm going to click new. I'm going to go to defuse and then I'm going to select emission. So light comes out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold my middle mouse button here again, pull to the side, select this uh, camera looking button, which is gives you your render options. And I'm going to uh, change this to HDTV 720. That's just the settings I like. This isn't necessary you know absolutely necessary for you to know for the you know completion of this tutorial i want to change this to new window though it can't help to know uh just some settings as i prepare to let you see what this looks like uh using cycles of uh, renderer i want to change this preview up to 100 and i'll take the render the rendered uh samples view also up to 100 the samples basically uh for lack of a better word, it controls how clear things look in Blender. So when I click here, you can see the ship there. And basically, you can see this number racing up. This number, the, the higher this number gets, the clearer the ship will look. And I can do things like I can I can set this to a thousand or, you know, even higher to make the uh, the image look clearer. Okay, and to set up our materials for this ship, what we're going to do is I'm going to click this kind of triangle. It looks kind of like a triangle with stripes going through. I'm going to click here. I'm going to left click here and hold and then just pull to the right. I'm going to change this to uh, rendered. Normally you're in solid. I'm clicking render to get this to look like that side. I'm going to hit a T to take away that menu. And uh, I'm going to hit a T to take away the menu here. And this, I'm going to turn back to a solid view here. I, l I just like the setup there. That's why I did that. I prefer the work on this side. The reason why you have a rendered view here and solid right here is you can see in a rendered view, you can't see your manipulator. You can't see the camera. So a lot of times it's easier to use a split view where you look at the rendered portion here uh, in this viewport. And then you look at your solid, you know, you're, uh, you look at things in solid mode here and you just manipulate them in solid mode while pay t paying attention to how they change in rendered mode over here. Okay, let's set up our glass. So what we're going to do is we're in object mode. We're going to select the ship. We're going to click here and go into edit mode. The glass is already selected here, which is great. We're going to take our mouse here a cursor I should say. I'm going to hold the middle mouse button so I can see the materials button. I'm going to click the materials button here. Actually while I'm in here I'm going to roll my mouse button my mouse wheel in. I'm going to hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan. Roll the mouse wheel in a little bit more. I'm going to hold shift and with uh, I'm going to hold my middle mouse button here. Pull so I can see face select. I'm going to select this area here because we want this to be transparent as well as this to be transparent here. Okay, so now what we're going to do is uh, I'm actually going to click new just to be safe. Uh, so we have our base material here. You're now going to click right here. Uh, this plus button. Now there's two plus buttons. Don't be confused. There's the one here and the one here. You want to click the one to your right. Click here. Now you're going to click new. All right. So you made one previous material. You didn't do anything with that. Now you made a second material here. You understand? Uh, and now with the second material, now we're going to get to work. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on where it says diffuse here. And then you're going to select transparent. And now you can't see anything happen yet. You know, even over here, it looks the same. And the reason for that is, is what you have to do is you will click assign here. And now you can see the change. Okay, now I'm going to zoom into this cockpit here, and it's very cool. You can see it's it's transparent. Only problem is it's a little too transparent. So how can we control the glass so it doesn't look like nothing is there at all? And the way we can do that is we can click this color. 
And when we lower this color down, we can uh, control it. So we want it to look transparent, but not like there's nothing there. So just by making it a little bit darker, you can still see into the cockpit, but uh, you know you don't have that that viewport where it's uh, you know, it looks like nothing is there. Okay, and while doing that, actually, we want to click here. We're actually going to make this a tad bit darker, right? So you can still see, but not too good. Okay, while we have those faces selected, we're going to hit H to hide them. I'm going to hold my middle mouse button and turn. I'm just trying to get to the point where I can see that uh, screen here. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to click here, go out of object mode. I go into object mode, sorry, because object mode is a uh, uh, takes us where we can actually deal with that screen since it's it's separate from the ship. It's actually a part of the chair. So I'm actually going to select this ship. I want to go here, move my move this down so I can see the outline or more. Actually, let me click here and name this ship. I'm going to click here to hide it. I'm going to select here. I'm going to hit tab to go into the edit mode of here. I still have this selected. So with that selected, what I'm going to do is I am going to click new for just a general material for this, but now I'm going to click here and click new so I can put a specific material right here. And the material that I'm going to put right there, I'm going to click here and it's going to be an emission. So I'll select here. I'm actually going to take this up to two, which is 200%. So there's going to be light coming out of, out of this, uh, this panel like it should be it makes sense that light would be coming from here uh, in the sense that this is where the pilot of the ship would be viewing their computer statistics and you know additional uh, I guess sensors for the uh, this ship so now that we have this uh, material selected and uh, uh, I mean, we, we selected a mission for the material and we have this face selected. What we have to do now is click assign. So now when we click assign, the light should be shining out of there. So now what we're going to do is unhide the ship. And we should be able to see some light, you know, coming out, depending on the, the angle we're looking at, looking, you know, through the uh, the cockpit at. I just thought it was cool when I was a kid. Uh you know, it, would, it would have uh, uh, different ships, different toys where you had ships. And the, the ones that I always really, really liked was when you you know, you know had the ship, the ship looked cool or whatever it was. But then when you looked very close, you could see inside there was a little co cockpit in there. I don't know, it just made it seem that much more real. And that's kind of what it reminds me of when you, you put a cockpit and a little monitor, you know, when you're making your own ship here. Okay, so now what we're going to do, remember we're in edit mode in the uh, the seat object. So now we're going to click here, go back into object mode. We're going to select the ship, and we're going to go back into edit mode for the ship itself. So now we're going to roll our mouse wheel out so we can get a good look at the ship. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure we're on face select. I'm going to select here. And here, I'm going to hit Control L to grab that entire piece of the, uh, the ship there. I'm going to uh, hold Shift and select here. And then I'm going to press Control L to select this part of the ship. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click here again, New. This time I'm going to go to Diffuse, and I'm going to select Mix Shader.
Okay, I'm also going to select this part. When I select this part, it's going to jump away from the material that I'm on. So I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to select here and select here. Then I'm going to hit control L. And now I'm just going to click back on this material five that I was working on. Then I'm going to click uh, here for the for glossy. And on this sh shader here, I'm going to click glossy again. And this, I'm going to turn it kind of to like a, a grayish, not quite black color. And then I am going to uh, roll up and select a sign. Okay, so now let's deal with this blockiness that you see here. Prepare yourself. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, we're actually going to hit A to select everything. Then we're going to hit Control 2. Now when I hit Control 2, what it's going to do is it's, it being Blender is going to automatically apply a subdivision surface with a view of 2 on here. And basically what that means is it's going to make everything smooth smooth out it's going to solve our problem of blockiness right here however for every for, for a second everything's going to look like it's uh totally you know it's just not going to look right so prepare yourself so here's control two and there it goes and uh the way we deal with this is we're gonna with face select on select here hold shift select here hold shift select here hold shift select here hold shift <clears throat> excuse me now we're gonna hit control l to select all of those uh that area there now we're gonna hit shift e and we're just gonna pull out and now you can see that's back to normal now we're gonna click our cage here we're also going to click our cage here we're gonna hit control l roll back a little bit i'm gonna hit shift e and then pull And now you can see that straightened itself out. Okay, now we have some areas to deal with right here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go to uh, Edge Select. I'm going to hold Alt and select this edge right here. And with this Edge Selected, basically what these these uh, purple lines are, and you saw these before for a brief moment with the chair. If I hit N and I go all the way up to here, there's a thing called Mean Crease. See, this is zero. Now, when I take this mean crease up to 100%, now you can see this gets sharp right here. So we're using these mean creases to make everything sharp. We're using the subdivision service to make everything, to make this part uh, basically have the round shape that we want it. So we'll just come back here. And I'm going to uh, hold Alt with Edge Select on and select here. When I hit Shift E, watch the mean crease, and I pull, it's just a shortcut way of turning that mean crease up. So I'll hit uh, Alt to select here. I'll hit Shift E. Take the mean crease up there. And you can even adjust your mean creases so that, uh, you know, you can take the mean crease up and down. So I'm going to hold Shift. I mean Alt. I'm not holding Shift. You hold Alt to get grab the... Uh, Ugh, you hold Alt to grab the loop cut. You hit Shift E to put your mean crease in there, and you can see it over here. Uh, I'll put one here. I'm going to hold Alt, select here, Shift E. Alt here. Just select that, Shift E. I'm going to click on my modifier, and you can see here's the modifier that I clicked on. I'm going to click here, and it just makes it look like the modifier is more put on to the mod to the mesh. I'm going to hold Alt, select here, hit Shift E. 
And now I'm just going to grab this loop cut here. Holding all, I grabbed it like before. Hit Shift E, pull that out. And now I'm going to hit A to select the entire mesh. And then I'm going to uh, select the uh, shade smooth. So now you can see it should look totally smooth right there. Okay, now when we turned on the shade smooth, you can see right here, this looks kind of weird. <clears throat> and it's just the shade smoothing how it's interacting. And we can deal with this fairly easily. And the way we can deal with that is you're going to click here. This is the modifier that we have put on by putting by pressing control two. Now you're going to click here and you're going to choose the edge split modifier. And as soon as we put that edge split modifier on, you can see that, you know, it dealt with that problem of that weird shading that was coming in from the uh, the shades move uh, option that we had chosen before. OK, we're almost done. I'm just going to select here. I'm going to press control L to grab there. I'm going to hold my middle mouse button and turn to the side. I'm going to hold shift and select here. I'm going to hit control L for here. Now I'm going to hit shift E to put a mean crease there. Okay, and now with those selected, I'm just going to click this material button. Click here and I'm actually going to assign it them as well and then we're just going to do one quick change to the material we're actually going to change we're actually going to change this to sharp then we're going to change this roughness to a little bit above 900 let me Select. I'm gonna hit tab to go into object mode. And if you ever want to make a light disappear? You can select. Like I have this light selected here. You can see that light there. If I click this data button here and I scroll down, and you see this uh, option that says ray visibility. If I click here, and then I select camera, the light will still emit its light, but it will disappear. You know, from your rendered scene, so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna hit shift space just so you can see this thing full view oh there's one thing i see hit shift space to go back okay i'm just going to select the ship i'm going to click here to go into edit mode i'm going to hold the middle mouse button to turn i'm going to roll my mouse wheel to zoom in and i can just see there's a little issue right here so what i'm going to do is go to i already have edge select selected i'm going to click here I'm going to hold shift and the middle mouse button to pan, hold the middle mouse button to turn to the other side. I'm going to hold shift to select here. Now I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis. And it looks like that solved the issue. So let's hit. The reason why it does that is just cycles trying to trying to uh, save render time or trying to uh, render samples correctly. I'm going to hit shift space. I'm just going to try to grab this cockpit right here. I'm going to select go to face select. I'm going to select right here. And here, don't want that. And hit control space to temporarily take away the manipulator. I'm just selecting all right here. Because I see that there's an issue here. Okay. And now I'm just going to press Alt S. 
oops, when I hit Alt S, and I'm going to hit S to scale on the X axis. And it looks like that dealt with the issue. Okay, guys, that's it for the tutorial. Uh, for all of you out there who like the videos on this channel and reshare them, thank you very much. I greatly appreciate it. And to those of you who are new to this channel, if you like these videos and you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.